Hi, everybody. My name is Dan Maggot, and I'm the CEO of Aerodani. And today we're going to be talking about managing IBM I development using the open source DevOps tool set. Specifically, we're going to be talking today about automating a lifecycle process for IBM I development. And we're going to use it as, as an example a fairly typical IBM I DevOps development pattern. So here you can see in this diagram, we'll be looking at uh, an environment where the developers make changes in their own development libraries and test them there. Then they move things to an integration library where they test their changes with other developers' changes. Then they move things into a QA library for QA testing. And when they move to QA, they also deploy the code out to uh, another partition, to a QA partition where, where the testing is done. And then finally, they move things to production. And when they want to move things from uh, integration test to QA, they have to get an approval in order to make Make that move. So that's the process we're going to be looking at. So it includes uh, moving source code from place to place, recreating objects, recreating all the dependent objects, and deploying code from one place to another. So we're going to go through this fairly quickly. Let's just take a quick look at what that would look like on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm going to start out here over here on my green screen and working in PDM so I can make my changes in PDM. So I can go and say, okay, well, I want to change this program and I want to change this program and maybe this program here and this program here. So let's go in and do that. I'm going to make a change here and we'll just say that uh, we're making this change on 11, uh, 26 at, uh, oh, we'll say at, at 5, 15 p.m., So we'll go ahead and save those changes and we'll make just the same change over here. And we'll just keep doing the same thing so we can see these changes later. And then in addition, I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to some files because we want to be able to see some dependency creation. So I've got some modules in here that will involve dependency creation and some files when we actually go to create the objects. So let's go to QDD SSRC and I'll make some, a change to this, uh, this physical file here. And we'll make a change to this physical file. Notice I only change comments because nobody here lets me work on any real executable code. Okay, so we've made our changes. So now I've said, okay, I've made those changes. Now, by the way, I could have also gone into uh, uh, our RDI plugin. I could have gone into Visual Studio Code. So here I am looking at Visual Studio Code. If I wanted to, I could have actually gone into Visual Studio Code and made changes directly through the Visual Studio Code user interface. So if I could, I could have gone in here and said, you know, let's make this and we'll make this uh, August 12th. And we'll save that change. So again, I can make my changes wherever I want. We have all the, the Git options from uh, the green screen or directly here inside of Visual Studio Code or through our RDI plugin. But I'm going to do most of the things uh, through the green screen since everybody's familiar with that. So let's go back over here to the green screen. So I've now made a bunch of changes. I'm going to go to my command line. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a git status, which will tell me what's going on, where I am right now. So I'm going to do a git status. And it says right now, Git says I'm working on the branch task one. So I'm working on task one. And I'm going to do a Git add now to add those changes that I made. So now it says, okay, I've done a bunch of things. If I do my Git status again, I'm going to see, okay, here are all the things that Git knows about. So it went out and it discovered all the things that I had changed. And it's now made that list of things to say, here are the things that you changed. Uh, and these are things now that are staged to be committed. So in, in Git terminology, that just means I've said, these are ready to be committed to the repository. 
So, but before I commit them, I might want to say, well, let me go ahead and test these changes. I want to see if these things actually work. So what I can do is I'm going to do a quick work live with my CUD customer DEV1 uh, object library. So I'm keeping things in a source library and an object library, but you don't have to do that. You can keep everything in one library. You can have multiple libraries. It's completely up to you. But if I look at my object library here, Right now, there's nothing in it. So it's it's a it's an empty library. And I want to do my testing. So I needed to create the things that I've changed, create all the things that use the things I've changed so that I can start doing my testing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the, the Eridani DevOps I build menu. And I build is the thing that controls the build process. And we're going to run what's called an Eridani make that says, don't just build the things I've changed, but build all the dependents, all the things that use the things I've changed. And it knows what the create options are. It discovers those by looking at how they were created before. It knows what the, what things are dependent on which things. So it knows how to run this create process. So let's go ahead and do the Eridani make. And I'm going to do that for my uh, customer uh, DEV1 OBJ library. And I'm now going to run that process. So now it's going to go ahead and do a, a create. And it's going to do the create based on where I am in my, my library list. So it's going to do it for my development environment. And it's going to use my, my library list to actually do these creates. So it's now going through the process of saying, okay, so what was changed? And it gets that information from Git. Git says, okay, well, here are the things that were changed. And then it goes to its own database and says, okay, so what things are dependent on those things? What else do I need to recreate? And it's recreating those as well. So you can see now it says that everything's built for me successfully. So now if I do my work live again in my customer uh, DEV1 OBJ library, I can now see that it created. So now this library is full of things. So it created the things I've changed and everything that uses the things I've changed. So it automatically does that create process for me. I can now do my testing. So if I wanted to, I could run my cust main program. Oops, let's... And I can go ahead and, and do my work and do my testing. So basically everything all, uh, is all set up now for me to do my work. And I can say, okay, I've tested it. Everything's good. Go ahead and commit these changes to the repository. So I'm going to run a git commit that says, okay, I want to commit my changes. Uh, updated the system for really neat new enhancement. And I can actually put a, a project ID on this if I want to. So I can, I can identify what project I'm making these changes for, but later on I'll be able to see what are the things I changed for this, this particular group of things. Why did I change this particular group? So now it's done the commit to my local repository. So for me as a developer, now I want to share those changes. So what I want to do now is I want to move these up into our cloud repository. And in the demo, we're using GitLab for this, but you could be using GitHub. You could be using Azure DevOps. You could be using Bitbucket, whatever it is that you want. We work with all of those. But I'm going to go ahead and do my Git push, which says go ahead and push these up to my cloud repository. Now where that's going to go just before we do it so you can see it, is it's going to go here to my, my GitLab environment. So here you can see my GitLab environment. And if I look at my screen, you know, the last changes I made were an hour ago. So let's go in now and, and actually push those changes up. So we're going to run my Git push. And so now it's gone ahead and done that. So if I go over here now and look at this and refresh my screen... All right, I've got this. I updated the system for a really neat new fe for a feature. So I've got our enhancement. So I've now got that change, that set of changes here in this environment. So I, I, I now have visibility to them. I can look at them based on the issue I was working on because it built into, into GitHub, there's a whole issue management system and I have those issues described here. So I could actually go into issue number two and I could see the changes that I just made. But uh, on this demo, we're really going to just focus on the the, the uh, automation of the, the process of moving things through the life cycle. So right now, now I've got this, I, I have this code uh, and it's in my task one branch. 
So I've got those here, but I don't have them in my integration branch. So maybe the next thing I want to do is they go from my, this task branch where we're testing changes for this task into an integration branch where things are being tested for multiple uh projects simultaneously. So multiple people are mo moving their projects into an integration environment. So the next place things need to go is to, to uh, the integration environment, and I'm going to move it using what's called a pull request. A pull request is something that says that I want to request that code get moved from one branch in Git to another branch. And in this case, I'm going to be going from task one to integration. And I've set that up as a fixed process. So in fact, the only place the code can go is from task one to integration. So if I go in and create my merge request, it's going to automatically fill that in for me. It says, well, you're going from task one. You have to go in integration. If I was to change where I was moving from, it would change where the code goes to because that process can be fixed so that you can ensure that things move through the appropriate stages as it moves through its life cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's let's do that merge request. So I'm going to request the move. Say, I'd like to have this code moved into the integration branch. And it says, okay, we're ready. I don't need anything else. Now, I could have set up approval processes, rules, in which case it wouldn't be ready to merge. But I'm going to go ahead and say, go ahead and do it. So it's going to run that merge. So now things are moving up into the integration environment. So now I've moved things into the integration environment. But if I go over to my IBMI, and I'm going to change my current library now to my integration library, so my, cust uh, my uh, customer ITG. The CUITG1 library. And I'm going to go to work member PDM. And if I change my library to that CU ITG1 library, and I go into one of the, those programs that I changed or one of the files that I changed. So if I go into this physical file, you'll see it doesn't have the 1126 date, it has the 1125 date. I don't have those changes yet. So what I need to do is say, okay, I want to pull those down from my cloud repository. And it's very simple. I just do a git pull. Just say I want to do pull those changes down. So I'm going to do that git pull operation. And that's going to go up to the cloud. And it's going to say, okay, bring down now to this environment those changes. So now if I go back into my file here and take a look at it, now I have that 1126 change. And again, I could do the build just like I did before in the in the development environment. I could do the create here in the integration environment and do my integration testing. So basically, I've now gone from development, working on a particular task to an integration environment, getting the code into that integration environment, building it. And now I say, OK, I've done my integration testing. Everything's good. I now want to move things to my QA stage. So the next thing in my life cycle is QA. So that's what has to happen next. So again, same thing as I did before, I can go in and I can create a merge request. So I can say, okay, I want to create a new re merge request. I don't have any open right now. So I'm going to go ahead and create that merge request. And notice it says, well, you're coming from integration. You have to go to QA. If I was to change the source branch, it would change the target branches to where things were going. And I can put in some information about this. Uh, you know, please approve these changes for testing. So I can create the, some information for the person who does it. They actually could go in and look at down below here. It actually tells you here's what's in this list of things that are being that are being asked to move. So I'm asking to move these things. And if I wanted to, I could actually drill in a little bit deeper and I could actually see specifically what's in here. So I could actually go in and see here are the changes that I'm asking to move, right? So I'm actually going in and looking at the changes that are being moved. So that information is, is right there for me to see. So we'll go back to our merge request. Say, okay, again, I'm moving from integration to QUA. Please approve these changes. And I'm gonna create that merge request. So now it's gonna, now it's posting that request. Now look what happened. It says, oh, the merge is blocked. One checked failed. What is the, the check that failed? All required approvals must be given. So I have not yet, the, 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 the approvals we need have not been set up. Now the approvers 
have been notified that they have an approver, approval to give. And it could be multiple approvers. It's completely up to me as how many people have to get involved. Here it tells me that there's only one approval required for this, but it won't let me do this merge to QA until somebody does this approval. And I could have other kinds of rules in here. I could say, I won't allow this to happen until the code scan has been done, or I won't allow this to happen until the unit tests have been run. So there are lots of things I could have in these rules that would block this request from happening for moving to the next stage. But I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna do this. So I'm gonna move over to my other browser here, which is a different user. And this user has the ability to, to actually approve merge requests. Now notice in the screen here, it says you don't have any, but if I refresh this, now I can see, oh, there is a merge request out there. And again, I also received an email telling me that I had a, an approval to do. And I can go in and again, I can look at that merge request and I can see you know, what's, what, what's, what's involved with this particular merge request. Now, here, notice I have a button that says approve because I have the ability to prove, approve this merge request. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And by the way, I could revoke it later if I want to. And notice here, it now says I could merge. So I could actually run the merge and it's posted an activity to the log that says that I approve this merge request so that later on, if we wanna go back, we can actually see who approved this. Now I'm not gonna do it from here because I'm gonna flip back over here to my original screen and notice it also now says ready to merge. I didn't have to do anything. It now says ready to merge because it got that approval. I actually could have set it up to say, if I get the approvals, just automatically run the merge. Don't ask me again. But I'm going to go ahead and say, go ahead and do that. So it's now doing, it's now running that merge. But in addition to just doing the merge, in this case, I also have it set up so there's an automation that occurs. So when things are happening, when I'm actually moving things in, into the QA environment, I can actually have something happen where, where a, a pipeline, where an automated process is kicked off that will actually move the code for me to that to the QA environment. So you know how I did the in, in the integration environment, I did the I actually did a pull, and then once I did the 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 pull, I then did the build of the objects. Uh, in this, I can actually have this this happen for me automatically, where I can have the this process go automatically. So we're going to go ahead and and take a look at that at at the uh, at the process that's that's happening right now. And it shows me there's a pipeline running. And if I click on that, it's actually showing me all the things it's doing. So look, notice it's doing the git pull. It's doing the build of the, the IBMI objects. And then it did the deployment and the deployment is now done. So I automatically had all that happen for me. And if I was to go over to my, my green screen here and go in and look at my library, so I could do a, a work live of my uh, my, Q, uh, my QA library, so my customer QA1 OBJ library, I'm going to see that it's now populated with all the objects. And then I have another library that's my deployment library where things get deployed, where just the objects are getting deployed. So if I do my work live into my uh, customer uh, QUA1 DEP deployment library, it's also gotten all, the, all those objects. So all that stuff has been deployed. So I, in this case, I've automated that entire life cycle process where I've, I've made my changes in development did my build and development to test the changes to make sure everything was working. I then moved things into my integration environment and pulled the source code down to the integration environment and built things there and did my integration testing. Then I moved things to QA, got the approvals to allow things to move to QA. We then ran an automation automatically as part of that uh, pull request that pulled the code down to the IBMI, did the build of the objects that were changed and all the dependent objects, and then deployed the objects out to the places they need to run. So basically that's how you can automate a typical kind of IBMI lifecycle using the open source tools and Eridani Connect DevOps. I look forward to, to going through some other functions available in Eridani DevOps uh, in another video.